In today's video, I'm going to give you at least four tips of camera movements that makes your footage look crispy good, and it's way simpler than you think. And the best thing is that you don't need to have like a big camera to do this. It works very well with what you got in your pockets. Finally, the summer is back here in Sweden and there is like mosquitoes all over this place. First one is the push and what we're basically going to do is that we're going to push the camera towards our subject. And what you do is that you take one step forward, tuck in your elbows to your body and then you just lean in to your shot and this is how it looks. You can also do like a little twist on your pushing shot because you can make your pushing shot to a transition shot also. What you basically do is that you lean so much forward that you almost tip over. It makes the footage go from like quite slow and when you are almost tipping over the camera will like speed up the footage and you can like turn it in towards something else. And when it comes to pushing shots, well, I think it's more of a like preference how do you want your footage to look because I prefer because I prefer the 60 millimeters because there's a lot of more movement going into the frame versus if I'm about to shoot like 35 50 or even 85 millimeters but it's up to you what you prefer but I myself I am a wide-angle guy when it comes to pushing shots simple as that so if you're new around here hi my name is Linus and I'm from Sweden and welcome to the channel and then we have my like go-to movement that I always use in my videos and that is the tilt pan. There is not a single video here on my YouTube that doesn't have the tilt pan shot because the tilt pan shot is so simple to do but it also makes the very most like simple footage look very very good. So when you're gonna do a tilt pan shot you want to do the same thing tuck in your elbows. The difference between a tilt pan shot and a pan shot is that on a pan shot you are going to do like this from left to right, depends on what you like. But the, the difference between a tilt pan shot is that while you are moving left, you're going to slide the camera towards the right. So it basically looks like this. So you're going from either side and then you're going to turn the camera to the opposite side. Simple. So why is the pan shot my most used angle? in my videos. The simplest answer I have is that it makes the most simplest things look very good on camera. And what I learned so far this year on YouTube is that you don't have to make things more complicated than it is because that ruins your workflow. And yeah, it makes like pushing out videos even harder than it is. So <laughs> yeah. Next two movements I want to talk about is slightly towards those who like to shoot slow-mo because these two shots especially looks good while shooting slow motion so next move is the roll shot the roll shot is something i use when i often shoot my slow-mo shots and so i basically do that to like make things more interesting than it actually is sometimes because you don't always have something awesome to shoot and therefore the roll shot is something that you can make it like quite not so interesting sequence quite interesting when it comes to like just using a different angle so how do you do the roll shot well you use your camera and when you're shooting your subject you simply like turn the camera like quite slow and to achieve the best effect when it comes to the roll shot, I think you should use manual focus or just set your focus to a point. It's going to be a better effect when you have a more shallow depth of field. So for example, take this log or what you can call it and uh, let's make it look a little bit more epic. I got for you is a spin-off of the rolled shot and this is called the vertical rolled shot. Step number one is that you have to start your sequence in the max zoomed in focal length that you have and in this case I have the 35 and 
as I'm turning the camera slowly while I'm going backwards, so at the same time zoom out slowly towards 60 millimeters. But the awesome thing about this effect is that you can actually do this with any kind of footage that you have, as long as you're moving in some sort of direction of forward and backward, because you can actually do this while you're editing your footage. And it's done by the exactly the same process. You have your start point while you're scale up your footage and then you have your end point where the footage is maxed zoomed out. A little simple trick is that the faster you move while doing this trick the bigger impact it's gonna have on your footage. I hope you liked this video and if you do please give it a thumbs up and why don't you like smash that subscribe button. I hope to see you in the next one so take care and don't get lost. Bye!